This video is brought to you by Sailing World and SailingWorld.com. Stuart Storley here with Sailing World Magazine and standing next to me is Mitch Booth, double Olympic medalist, um, multiple world champion in the various cat classes, uh, creator of the Extreme 40, or played a big role in that, right? And as well as a former skipper of China team. So one of the guys who's, one of the few guys who's had the experience to helm the AC-45s. And Mitch is here doing commentary on the TV for this event, the third stop on the America's Cup World Series. Behind us, San Diego Bay, a little bit of a lighter venue than what we've seen in the past two places. Give us your thoughts on racing here and some of the unique aspects of this venue with the AC-45. Well, you know, this, uh, this is a lighter venue, but the sort of uh, racing that we'll see here is probably going to be all about the, you know, the, the tactics in this light breeze. It's not going to be so much you know, survival and crew handling and, and maneuvers. It's really going to be a, a very tactical race because I think most of the teams are pretty well matched. So, uh, you know, I, I'd expect to see the guys that are probably not as, as well trained but very tactical sailors uh, sort of coming up and mixing it a bit. And we saw that already with some of the preliminary races. Yeah, well, yesterday we had four races, four different winners. So certainly this appears to be a venue that may be not penalize, I guess, the teams that haven't spent as much time on the boat handling as, as Oracle or Team New Zealand. Sure. But of course, the teams that did come out on top were Oracle and Team New Zealand, uh, especially the Kiwis who, when they get out in front, they win. When they get behind, they come back. What is it that makes that team, Dean Barker, Tactician Ray Davies, the rest of that team so strong? It's just practice, 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 you know. Uh, they've had their 45 for quite a while. Uh, they, they're a pretty strong team together. They're, they're sailing lots of other boats. They've got an Extreme 40, got the SL33s, of course, and uh, they're really a, you know, a polished performance. So it's no surprise that they're at the front still, and uh, you know, I'd expect to see them you know, dominate here and, and be one of the top, top boats. But don't be surprised to see the French guys there now too. Uh, I think uh, with the changes of the, the crew line up there, uh, they're coming from multi-hull background, they're short course race specialists, they're racing on the Extreme 40 circuits for years and, and very, very good. Um, you know, Pierre Pinac, uh, for example, he's uh, you know, racing with, uh, with Gitana and they're only one point off the lead in the overall series there. So this style of racing really suits those guys and uh, they don't have any problem at all adapting their multi-hull skills to these sort of boats. These boats are tough to sail, but they seem to have made a quick transition, as you mentioned, that both French teams have basically new crews for this regatta. They've yes. almost done wholesale replacements, brought in new skippers, but guys, you say guys with, with a lot of multi hull experience. I was out yesterday for, for two rides, and you know what amazed me about this racing is that blinking light, the boundary light, which seems to be either going off slowly, which indicates you're getting close, or going off really quickly, which indicates you better tack soon or you're going to get a penalty. Yeah. How does that? How does the boundary and that light in particular uh, affect the racing and the tactical, the tactical plan as you as you start the race? Well, it does affect it, and uh, you know, you've got to pick your time when you want to be tacking near that boundary. You don't want to be tacking, you know. Uh, too close to it that you're going to be in danger of a penalty but you also want to make sure that when you tack you're going to get a clean lane you know on the next tack and uh, someone's not going to be giving you some gas because uh, you don't have the freedom as if you would on a free course to you know basically tack and jibe when you want here you've got the boundaries and you know sometimes you're going to get completely boxed in and tack in the wrong spot sailing someone's gas whereas normally you'd sail you know a few meters more tack on their hip have clean air, and that's just not the case here, you know. Uh, so it, it does come into play, and uh, it actually adds another tactical element to the to the game. And I think it's quite interesting. You have to think maybe two or three moves further in advance than what you would have just sailing the wind conditions and your own clean air at that moment. So you're thinking so far up the course, how many tacks have you got to actually get to the gate? to actually go around minimizing the amount of tax, keeping it clean and uh, you know, obviously then applying the wind to, to that whole game plan as well. Yeah. It's a complex tactical structure, complex tactical puzzle and to add to the problem is the fact that tacticians on these boats, so the guy who is nominated as a tactician spends most of his time helping the other three guys just get the boat around the course. Yeah. Who is, I mean, how do you handle the tactical responsibilities in these races to make it to, to make a winning team, well, who, who's doing the, who's calling the shots? Well, everyone's out of breath, you know, they are really physical. Uh, every team's different. Uh, I've seen everything from 
the helm calling every shot, every tactic, because he's the one that's doing the least physical job, and he's got probably the, the most energy to be able to you know, look around and do some other stuff. But I've seen everything from that to the, the helm just steering the boat and the other guys telling him exactly where to go. So, What, what it, works? What's best in your opinion? Uh, well, I think it's probably a combination of both. I think in, in close quarters when you're coming into mark roundings, choosing which gate, positioning with the rest of the fleet, uh, you know, close uh, crosses, the helm really has to take the, the decision role and the tactical decisions then. Uh, the, the longer term, which is, which is not very long in an 18 minute race, but slightly longer term, the leg, leg length, then perhaps uh, the other guys can play a, a more of a role in the, what the strategy, what the tactics will be over that leg. All right, looking, looking at what we had, the, the racing this weekend, we start on Wednesday with yep. the, the match racing, although it's some fleet racing to determine the seating order and then some match racing. Who do you look for to come through in that, in those, in that event? Well, you know, the, the strong teams are still going to be strong, but I just expect to see it a lot closer here. Uh, I, I like the look of the French this week. I think they're, they're going to be pretty good. Uh, New Zealand, of course, is they've proven that they they're still can jump on only with one day's training. Um, Bundy was a bit of a surprise on Oracle, you know. Uh, I expected him to see, see him a bit more in the front, but, uh, well. He, he, did, he did struggle yesterday. He did struggle. New, but, new skipper, new tactician on that boat. Yep. And uh, he's changing the tactician again tomorrow. Um, Tom Slingsby is out. Yeah. And, no, Tom's and, coming in. But Tom's coming in. Yeah, and uh, I forget who he had on uh, yesterday. It was uh, another, another young guy having a run, waiting for Tom to arrive. So, you know. Hopefully Tom can just slip straight in there, and uh, I'd expect Bundy to be to be pretty good. You know, he's one of the best cat sailors of all time. You know, right? But this is a, you mentioned a unique format. Uh, Darren, Olympic medalist like yourself, Tom Slingsby is a is a top laser sailor, a, a top hope for for an Australian medal in 2012 in London. So they're going to have to adjust to this short course and uh, get on board quickly. Yeah, it's it's all about adjusting to to the style of racing. But a good sailor is a good sailor. You know. And uh, the best will always come to the top, for sure. All right. We'll see if that's true this week. Of course, when you say the best will come to the top, all these sailors are the best. So whoever comes to the top is certainly the best on that day. Mitch, we thank you for your time, and we'll look forward to hearing you comment on Pleasure. this racing.